If the goal of Web3 is to overturn the internet status quo, then the structure of social tokens today is fundamentally flawed from the ground up. Tokenized communities are centered around what you have, often social or financial capital, while they should instead be centered out about what you do. Welcome to Ethereum Audible, Ethereum in depth, where we read the best in the Ethereum and Web3 ecosystem. I am Yehoshua Zlatogorsky. Glad to be back. Glad to be reading another piece on governance and social tokens and how things come together on chain with on chain governance so that we can form better communities. Over the past two weeks, we've been diving into proof of stake and a relatively bearish case for Ethereum. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Those were big, massive reads. Today will be shorter. But if you enjoyed that kind of proof of stake and in depth dives, let me know. Shoot me a message on Twitter. Um, I'm at YehoshZL. I'm thinking about doing a primer on Ethereum 2.0, the beacon chain, shards, how that all plays together. So let me know if that would be interesting. But today we're going to be reading Social Token Paradox by Gabby Goldberg. Gabby is or was an investor at Bessemer, has gone down the crypto rabbit hole and this piece is a great short piece on where social tokens and where governance needs to go to get us to where we need to go. But first, I want to thank the sponsors of the show who made this episode possible. This episode is brought to you by Alp Audio. Want to learn on the go but need more depth than a podcast? Alp is the app for you. It's an audio education app that brings great in-depth courses that are as fun as podcasts, but as educational as a degree. Each lesson comes with summaries, additional resources, flashcards, and more. You can even find Ethereum Audible on Alp with all of those additional resources. If you want to check it out, head over to get.alpaudio.com, and that's A-L-P-E, Alp, A-L-P-E. Let's go. Social Token Paradox by Gabby Goldberg In the metaverse, when we look in the mirror, who do we see? Last week, John Palmer wrote about new internet logic. He argued that the next wave of companies built in Web3 will need to build on a new mental model of the internet. John is right, and many aspects of Web3 have already done so. The decentralized publishing platform Mirror, where this piece is hosted, puts power in the hands of writers. Royal, which recently launched, lets fans buy ownership in their favorite artists. The distributed hard drive Arweave offers a permanent repository for information, and the graph sorts through it all by allowing its community to curate and query its vast store of data. Across all these verticals, Web3 is rethinking the internet. Many of these projects using this new internet logic will become the building blocks for a new economy. But social tokens today still have yet to adopt the latest mental model. If the goal of Web3 is to overturn the internet status quo, then the structure of social tokens today is fundamentally flawed from the ground up. Tokenized communities are centered around what you have, often social or financial capital, while they should instead be centered out about what you do. Today, decentralized communities, or DAOs, are primarily valued proportionally to their token price. When the value of a token goes up, so does the value of its community. And when the token price is higher, the community naturally becomes more desirable to join. We saw this over the last few weeks as decentralized community Friends with Benefits skyrocketed to nearly $200 a token. The problem here, in what I call the social token paradox, is that with this mental model, tokenized communities are incentivized to uphold exclusivity. Let's work backwards. If you want your community to be valuable, you need your community's token to go up in price. This makes sense, sure. But to make the token go up in price, you have two choices. You can either increase the price of the token, or you can decrease the number of tokens available to prospective members. Either way, this restricts access to the community 
and promotes exclusivity, codifying and enforcing a level of scarcity that feels almost at odds with Web3's vision of a truly open internet. So how do we solve the social token paradox? As an ecosystem, we need to rethink the value of a token from the ground up. The decentralized communities of tomorrow will be centered about what we do instead of what we have. This will be accomplished through both pre-existing on-chain data, as well as through a more robust DAO onboarding process that enables communities to better understand prospective members, their values, and their goals. This will come as a tectonic shift to decentralized organizations and communities over the next few months. Once we solve the social token paradox, capital will no longer be the primary status symbol in Web3. Instead, status will be composed of how many communities you are part of, or how many things you've done online. The more online history you have, the richer your own story is, and the more things you can be a part of in the future. If we can democratize access to a Veblen good, status becomes about being a part of something, rather than how much money you have. We already see this in products like Fractional and Partybit, which enable collective ownership of highly sought after NFTs, as well as in products like Rabbit Hole, which allow users to earn crypto by using the latest decentralized apps. In both cases, democratizing access to capital is the intermittent step to on-chain reputation. These are exciting proof points of changes to come, but we are only scratching the surface. In the real world, when we look in the mirror, we can only see a small fraction of who we are. In the metaverse, we'll be able to go a whole lot deeper, and it's going to start with social tokens. Thank you to Brian Flynn and Cooper Turley for their continued support and for informing my thinking on this piece. So that's the piece. It's a short one, but I think it raises a key point in what we've been talking about in the governance discussion. Because for as long as governance remains as it is today, which is mostly a one token, one vote framework, we're going to be stuck in measuring contribution based on capital, not participation. Now, for some communities that works and that's fine, but for most that doesn't. And that's part of the problem of modern democracy. We think we're getting a one person, one vote system, but we're really getting a one token, one vote system. As for the social token paradox itself, Gabby lays out one thing. I'm going to give it my own little twist here. And it goes like this. Social tokens go up in value as their utility increases, either by getting more people in, signaling that there's more value related to the social token, whatever it is. It's just a supply and demand dynamic. But that, once the token price goes up, it prices people out, leading to the old, you know, adage of no one goes to that bar anymore. It's just too crowded. And you're left with exclusive communities of rich whales, which is not a social token and not why it was launched to begin with. And at the core of social and community, though, I think there are more poignant questions, which is why I wanted to read this article which is how do you maintain something exclusive that's also interoperable as long as that is based on capital and tokens? As in, as long as tokens are the main currency, how do you let only a select group in and not be it based on capital? Because today on Uniswap, SushiSwap, part of the beauty of Web3 is that it's all interoperable and anyone can buy into your system and that prices people out. And that's the main point around governance that that's where I think we have to go to. And that's where this article ends up, which I really love. And that's governance that's not based around capital and what we have, but as Gabby puts it, around what we do. Proof of works, so to speak. And those are the next levels, the next layers that need to be built to make this come alive. That's where I believe we're going. That's what gives DAOs and Web3 communities the power to go the extra mile. And I think we'll be seeing more of this in our next read on Beyond Chain Governance by Vitalik.